Hi, this is Ruth Teresa with One Inspiring Woman, and today I'm answering a Dear Ruth Teresa question. That's right. Today I'm answering a Dear Ruth Teresa question about psychics. Mm. So let's start. The question is, Dear Ruth Teresa, what are some of the basics I require knowing before I do a psychic reading with somebody? It's a really great question. One of the things I tell people to do as they're getting ready for an appointment with me or anybody um, is to write down your questions. And if you just kind of start randomly writing down your questions, like I want to ask this, I want to ask this, I want to ask this. And as you kind of look at your questions, you'll realize like this is maybe career or this is family or I want to understand something about my mom or my dad or my son or daughter, or my partner, my spouse, whatever that is. And you'll kind of realize like I have kind of like these little segments or these little sections. Um, and that's kind of a great way to kind of get your um, questions in order. And I always tell people, um, start with your most important section first. Okay. So whatever your number one is that day is do start with that one because it's really the stuff that's really on your mind the most. If I only had, I always tell people like if you only had time to talk to me about one subject, what would it be? That's the one you want to start with. If you only had time for two, what would be number one? What would be number two? That's kind of kind of order to put them in. Um, and I guarantee you the psychic's not judging you. They're just kind of like ask answering your questions. Um, so kind of once you get your kind of your questions into kind of subjects, like this is my career, this is my husband, this is my um, daughter, this is my son, this is uh, what's coming up next for me, whatever it is, ask, you know, put them in order of what's important to you or how you want to ask the questions. Um, make sure that you stay on the same topic um, to kind of um, ask two or three or four questions and ask them clearly. So many times I get people to ask me like, well, how does she feel? Do you have one she in your life? No, you probably have a whole bunch of she's in your life. You have maybe a daughter, a sister, a mother, an aunt, a niece, a coworker, female, all that kind of stuff. So at least give the first name. It makes it a little bit easier. So how does um, Anne feel about this subject? Or how does Anne feel about going off to college? Um, how does um, Lupe feel about her new job? that makes it easier. Um, and so kind of, and it helps me, especially me to kind of like trigger on your questions. Like, what is it that you really want to know? Um, so I always tell people to do that. Um, kind of getting your questions in order is like the number one thing. The second number one thing or kind of the next thing to kind of like really, really important is to calm down. Everybody's like, I'm so excited. I've never been to a psychic. That's great. That's awesome but calm your energy down. Um, I actually schedule this type, type of time in my appointments um, already. So when you come in and you have a 30 minute or an hour session scheduled with me, I've allotted an extra 15 to 20 minutes um, around your time frame. So if your appointment started at one and it's supposed to end at like um, two o'clock, I actually add 15 to 20 minutes onto that. Um, so I have plenty of time to um, get you calm, relaxed, easy going, a couple of sips of water and kind of relax your energy so I can connect to your energy much easier. And then once I get my connection to you, I usually give you a couple of uh, last minute things to kind of just be aware of. Um, and those things can be like, um, I stop and stare a lot. My job is to listen really, really, really carefully to the other side. That's my job. So when someone's really listening, you'll see them kind of like, stop stare, stop look, kind of, and I tell people like, it doesn't mean I'm looking at a ghost, doesn't mean I'm not, just means I'm really intently listening to the other side, which is my job. And so that's kind of a, a great uh, way to think about it. Um, next is keep an open mind. So many times people are like, this is what I want to hear from the other side. These five words or these 10 words or whatever it is. I want to know that this happened. And a lot of times um, it's not always on the same agenda as the person we're trying to communicate with on the other side. Sometimes they're 
agenda is more like, I need you to know this, or I want you to know this, or I want you to have this information. And so, <clears throat> um, it's easier if you kind of come at it with that as like, what, is there anything else that so-and-so wants me to know? Um, it comes a little bit easier. Um, I think it's kind of interesting, um, to understand kind of like, um, where you want to go, you know what I'm saying, kind of like asking those questions, or even if you have like any uh, messages that you haven't already covered in your uh, reading, do you have any other questions um, or answers or insight from your angels and guides? Do you have anything from your guardian angel? Um, that sort of thing kind of really helps um, kind of clear out that last, like, is there anything else that, that my angels and guides want me to know? Is there anything else that I need to know at this time frame? And that can be really cool and interesting. Um, sometimes um, people don't even know to ask questions like, how many past lives have I had? How many angels do I have with me at any given time? How many uh, ghosts do I have with me? Um, is there um, a past life that I'm more connected to than another? Really good questions. Um, not all psychics can see past lives. I kind of am weirdly gifted in that area. So I can see people's past lives and see that connection to them. But that's a really great way. Um, and then sometimes... Um, that's really great to kind of get an insight from that past life of like what went wrong, how it went wrong, um, who was involved with it, um, and getting more insight into that past life that can maybe even help you in your current life now. That's kind of fun. Um, let me see. Um, clear your mind. Um, be open to what um, is said. So many times I've had people tell me, I'll be like, oh, uncle so-and-so is here to give you a message. And they're like, I don't have an uncle so-and-so. Okay, so I kind of, okay, Uncle So-and-So, you, you know, you head off and um, they'll text or call me um, later on and be like, oh my gosh, that was my mom's brother that I never met that passed before I was even born. Or that was my grandmother's, whatever it is, you know, kind of, and I'm like, so be open-minded to it. A lot of times they'll end up telling you who they are um, and what their message is and why they're still connected to you. Um, sometimes it's kind of like you're going through the same thing I went through and so I want to support your energy. That's a really fun and great message from the other side. So let's do a couple of angel cards, angel cards, um, and kind of get us a little bit more insight of kind of like how to get prepared for a psychic reading. So the first card that's coming forward is Archangel Michael. I work with Archangels constantly. I love working with Archangels and their energy is amazing and really just kind of fun and easy to work with. But I will tell you that they can come through with some great, amazing insight and messages from the other side, but know that there are Archangels in the space wherever um, I'm working at. Trust. Trust that you're getting the message that you really require understanding at that time frame. Um, and it, trust that you are prepared. If you've written down your questions, if you're ready to go, um, it makes all the difference in the world. Um, I guarantee you the hardest client for me to read for is someone that comes in and just says, tell me about me. Because there's a lot of things I could tell you about you that you really don't care. You may not care that your elementary teacher that you love way back when past or is sick. Um, you may not care that um, co-worker five jobs ago um, is not doing physically well. Um, so it's kind of like you're like whatever you know that's old stuff but that's what I'm saying is like when you're asking the questions you're telling me where to push my energy. You're telling me what you want to know what the questions are where you want that information to come in from. This one is literally popping out. Um, friendships. Um, Friendships, people show up um, unexpectedly during group readings. And sometimes it's people that you've known in life that maybe you didn't even know they would passed. Um, I've had people go, I think I had a friend named so-and-so like that when I was in junior high or high school or elementary school. I'm like, mm -hmm. they passed. Um, and, and now they're coming back to say, hi, how's it going? And so they'll be like, I had no idea that they had passed she just wanted to stop in or he just wanted to stop in and say, hey, how's it going? And let you know that they're on the other side. So um, signs, there's always signs that um, ghosts leave us, um, that they're connected to us. Um, it may not be uh, really huge signs, uh, but I guarantee you that there's signs around us all the time, that they are around us, that they love us, that we are on their minds and their hearts. Um, and that's kind of the best part of it. Um, kind of that best part of kind of like, where are they at? Where are they at now? Focus. 
I will tell you that um, this one's a very interesting card because focus is very interesting. Um, ghost will be with um, one person more than another on the other side. Um, and it's usually whoever they usually whoever they felt uh, connected to in their life. But they are kind of like popcorn. They don't need uh, travelers. Um, um, a um, passport or a ticket or anything else. They get to kind of go play with their family wherever they are. In the whole wide world, they get to go, if they have family in in Europe, they get to go and visit them. And they kind of just like, I call them my little popcorn pop. And so they pop over and check in on them and then they'll come back and be with you. And then they go over and check on someone else and then they're back with you. So that's kind of the interesting part is like, they kind of pop around, but they're doing it to kind of check in on their family, but they're usually with one person more than anybody else. And that's kind of the fun part about ghosts is a lot of times like when you, um, invite them into your um, into your reading and to get information from they're there to tell you what you really want to know or what they really feel like you um, require knowing at the time and they are always on your side. I thank you so much for joining me today and I know that we'll be talking again soon.